All right, our next talk is uh, going to be given by co-PI Robin Selmer, uh, BINPEC++ Demo. Thanks. Welcome, Robin. <laughs> Thanks, Jenny. So this talk is about um, a system I've been working on for a while, as some of you know. Um, it's reaching a stage where it's getting usable, actually, so I thought I'd give you guys um, a demo today. So I have, have, like I think, three slides to set a bit of, of the, the, the ground and then the rest will be mostly interactive. Um, so this is about parsing protocols, and the, um, the, the observation is that adding a new protocol to Bro tends to be really hard because it's a lot of low-level work which you have to get right um, to uh, be both efficient and robust in the f when we're facing like, lots of, of real-time traffic. So and this is about making that easier. And just to kind of, um, kind of set the stage for what I'm talking about. So, so most of you people have probably seen a variant of this uh, version of this, this layered diagram of Bro, of Bro in some form. Bro is structured in these two parts. The event engine does actually all the low-level protocol decoding, looking at packets and then generating events upstream, and there's the policy script interpreter, which is essentially the user interface of Bro, and that's what we have mostly been working with um, at this uh, event so far, right? This talk is, talk, actually this is not connected even. Um, this talk is about this lower part. So I'm talking about how to do this protocol decoding inside the event engine. And just to briefly recap how this event engine works internally, how Bro's event model works, um, imagine you have an HTTP session you have with a request for a file index.html, right? And the server responds with a status, okay, plus the data back. On the wire, that is essentially um, a stream of packets from both sides, um, color-coded by direction here with the syn packets, um, the data packets, acknowledgments, and the fin exchange at the end. And then Bro kind of looks at these packets and tries to figure out what's going on in terms of the protocols. Um, for TCP, that's pretty easy, so it looks at um, the, the, the soon handshake and generates this connection established event, which then shows up at the script land, as we have seen in the exercises. Um, and then more interesting, it, at the application layer, it actually puts the data packets in order. Does this TCP stream reassembly, so it has a chunk of data. And now it starts parsing this chunk of data according to whatever protocol it is. In this case, HTTP. Um, so and then it figures out that there's an HTTP request, a GET request, and the URL being requested, and it raises this event. Right. Same for the HTTP reply. Um, for the other side, reassembly first, then decoding the data stream, and then um, the connection finished at the end to, to finalize the connection. So, and what I'm going to talk about next is basically this part. Given a chunk of data, according to some <coughs> protocol specification, how do we get the events out of there? In other words, how do we write a protocol analyzer for Bro? And um, traditionally, there have been like, like different generations of parsers in Bro. So there's the generation one, which is essentially doing this decoding manually in C++. So that was how, how um, actually the, the, the old analyzers still in Bro are doing it. Um, it's very cumbersome and error prone, as uh, I believe several uh, generations of students can, can uh, confirm at this point. It's really not a lot of fun because you have to be very careful how you basically pass untrusted data while still being efficient, um, right? Because you cannot assume that actually the data actually conforms to the protocol. Um, if, you, if you look at real-world network traffic, um, the RFCs are constantly violated and you have to basically deal with every single corner case in there. Um, and that in C or C++ is really hard because you need to get your management right, you need to make sure you're only uh, dereferencing valid pointers, you're not going out of bounds with your arrays, all that kind of stuff. So then there was generation two, and that is uh, the, the, the bin pack system, which for those who know YAC, it's essentially a YAC for protocols. It's a parser generator in the sense that you give it a grammar of the syntax of your protocol, and it spits out a bunch of C++ code doing the parsing. Basically what earlier you would have written yourself, it now generates for you. And then you take the C++ code, compile it into Bro, and you add basically semantical code in addition on top, the, the stuff which actually generates the events and the stuff which maybe does some state tracking across different messages in the protocol. You still write that in C++, but at least you get the parsing for free here. Um, and that makes it a lot easier, and that is kind of the second generation currently in, in Bro and our standard way right now to write protocol analyzers for Bro. Uh, it's however, pretty much tied to Bro. I mean, in principle, you could use BinPack for other systems as well, but, but it tends to be hard. 
So, and what's coming next uh, is BinPack++, as we've nicknamed it. It's kind of still looking for a better name, actually. Um, the main, it's, it's actually a completely rewritten BinPack. So it's uh, on the implementation level, it has nothing to do with the, with the old system, but it takes the same approach in the sense you give it a grammar and it produces a parser. But the difference is it's a completely closed system in the sense that you don't need any C++ anymore. Um, you just have a single language. You express everything in this language, both syntax of your protocol as well as semantics. So if you need to keep state, you need to add additional logic, it's part of the language. I'm going to show that. And it's actually even the interface to Bro doesn't require any additional coding anymore. There's a little like interface file which tells Bro how to generate events out of this binpack++ specification. And the trick here on the implementation level is to make that like easily usable while still being efficient for this real-time high volume parsing uh, we need on the 10 gig or 100 gig link. So let me switch to some shell. And, and basically, I thought the best way Oh, actually, I um, need to turn off my mirror in here. That's, but, uh, that's my shell, yeah. <laughs> How about that? Two shots. <laughs> yeah, that's... All right. So basically, I thought the best way to demonstrate the system is to write a, write a parser. Um, I wanted to pick a network protocol, which Bro doesn't support yet, but it needs to be something simple, and the most simple, not yet supported, I could think of is TFTP. So for those who know that, um, let's actually, TFTP is, I don't see my mouse here. Okay, I need to do this differently. Okay. TFTP, let's look at the RFC, it's really simple. It's a UDP protocol, um, and this is the, the gist of it. Are there? Can you see my mouse? Yeah, there it is. So basically, UDP, it's a UDP protocol. It's just sending like individual messages around. So, so the client does sends a request for a certain file. It gives um, the file name along with that. And back from the server come data packets. Um, they are numbered. They send like up to 512 bytes per packet back. The client acts them. And then um, that goes on until the data has been transferred. So it's really like simple client request, um, a request response at the UDP level. Um, and you see the structure of the protocol here. Basically, each of these uh, five uh, messages start with um, two bytes indicating an opcode number for the protocol. And just the opcode then determines how the rest is passed. So in, in the case of a read request or in, in terms of a write, a write request, um, there's the file name and, and, and some mode for the data encoding and for the data um, it would be a three at, at the initial part of the packet and um, the block number in the data. So really simple. Um, I have a trace here which is essentially, um, well, it is a TFTP session transferring a, a zip archive. So I'm requesting this archive.zip and you see in the TCP dump output how these, these, these data packets and the act packets follow, right? So now I wanna, as, as a first step, I basically just wanna parse this request packet. And I, for now, I totally ignore bro, I ignore like, like IP header, UDP header, I just wanna take the UDP payload and parse that. So I've extracted actually um, this first payload, of the, or the payload of the first UDP packet into this file tfdprq.dat, and you see basically this is the, the opcode, then there's the file name here, um, it's, it's terminated by zero, and then it's, um, you don't see the, the octet. So that's, that's the kind of stuff I want to pass right now. All right, let's write a parser. I go into my editor, and I write a binpack++ plus plus grammar. Um, it always starts with a module name, and I need some library functionality in pack. And then I go ahead and define um, a unit called, I just call it a message. And that basically lays out, well, how does a message in TFTP look like? And we just saw that at the very, at the very first, um, at the beginning of, of a packet, you, you find an opcode, op and the opcode has um, actually two bytes. And then the rest follows dep depending on what kind of opcode that actually is. But let's just do this for now. So basically, all I tell binpack++ here is, Please parse two bytes out of the data I give you. Go into this other shell. 
um, I take this file. So here's the first difference to classic binpack. I actually, binpack++ works standalone. So I have a driver program, which in the back, uh, on the back end side, uses the binpack++ system to compile this grammar just in time into executable code into a parser, which it then executes on the data it gets. Let's try that. And you see, you don't see much, because, well, we parsed it, presumably at least, but there's nothing, no action defined there. We, we don't see anything. However, I can, in Impact++, plus plus, I can actually just add some code to execute. So I tell it, whenever you're done parsing this message, please, in this case, just print this opcode. Um, this is the second difference to binpack. I can now, what I said earlier, I can actually add code inside the language to this parsing process. Self, I reference the current instance of the message, and then I reference the, the op field. Let's see if that works. Well, it doesn't. Um, what's wrong? This is the part of the live demo. <laughs> oh, no, there's no typo, but. I actually need to tell Winback++ what is basically, I could have multiple units in one file, I need to tell it what's the start unit, and I need to export it for that. It should actually give an error message if it doesn't get anything. There we go, one, right? That's the opcode. <laughs> okay, so first experiment, success. Okay, that's more interesting. So now we have to basically, let's go back actually here to, to our RFC. Let's, um, we have to now differentiate what's coming next, right? So I, I do a switch. I can tell binback++, plus plus, okay, so if this opcode is a one, then I want to pass it, say, as a request. And as the request, I define another um, structure, a unit. So and what, what happens now? So we have to see, so we passed the one already. So the request is all, everything following the opcode. So it's a, there's a file name terminated by a zero. So we just define a file called by, uh, of type bytes, which is basically raw data. Um, and we tell, can tell binpack++, plus plus, okay, pass this until you encounter a zero. Um, the mode which follows is the same. Let's try that. Okay, I always do syntax errors. Um, Still another one. Um, actually, I need to give this field a name because so that I can later reference it. Still. <laughs> Semicolon. Cool. It parses, but we don't see much because we don't really print this out. Let me just print the whole message out, then we see a bit more. Okay, so let's scroll this up. So, see. So we still have the opcode in the message, and then we have a subrecord at this field RRQ, and we see the archive name, and we, we find the mode. So now we have passed the first message, and basically, um, I would now go ahead and let me just uh, let me get back at my RFC, close that. So um, for my trace, I just define the codes I need for my trace. So there's data, um, and I need the egg. And I'll just add this here. Now, type data. Um, so let's see, there's a block number coming for us. It's, it's two bytes. So I just say that as an uint 16. And then there's data coming. And that's a bytes object. And it just actually goes to the end of the packet. So I can just tell binpack++ plus plus, pass, please, until you run out of input. That is that one. And the egg is actually pretty similar, just that it doesn't have any data. Um, let's see if I got that right. So it's still actually, it's the same input, so it shouldn't do anything else. But I also have, for example, a data packet, which is the second packet of this trace. Well, there's the data, right? So now you see, basically the, the request part is unset, but now we have the data part set, and we see this is the block number out of the packet, the same as we saw on the TCP dump. Um, well, and there's all the data, which is a bit messy, obviously. Um, well, we just wrote a TFTP parser. <laughs> and 
And again, this is outside of Bro. So next step is we want to get it inside of Bro, right? Um, in Bro, we usually we want events. So let's think about what kind of events we would like to get. I write a tfdp.bro file, and um, usually I go into a module namespace, and then I want events. So let's see. Typically, we basically, in Bro, um, most commonly map the, 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 the message, message types of the protocols pretty much directly to events. So let me define, I want a TFDP event. Um, or basically, I, here I, I first describe what I would like to get, and later I show you how to actually generate that. So what I would like to get is a TCP, um, let's call it an HTTP, a TFDP request event, and then usually we pass the connection first, and then the, both the, the, the two parameters coming with that was the final name, which is a string, and it was the mode, which is also a string. Right? So that looks like a typical bro event. In this case, all I do with it, once I actually get it, is um, let me just print, this is the request. Maybe I print um, the responder, the server, just so that I see something and I print the, the two arguments. And then maybe I also want um, a data event where I get the connection, the data, the string as a string, and maybe I just print that as data, and then I don't want to get the raw stuff again. I just print the length of the data. Okay, so this this is where I want to get. Given my parser, given this bro script, I want to get these ex events to execute. So the missing piece is that I need to now tell Winpack++ plus plus, um, what kind of where, where to actually find this data to put into these events. So and for that, I have a second um, language which, which defines this interface. It's really basically just describing race this event out of these fields. And I call this the EVT files. So, and they actually, I need a reminder of the syntax here. Okay. So basically, I need to tell it first, okay, what is the grammar we will want to load for this? It's this TFTP pack two, which we just wrote. So and then, um, before I can actually define the events, I need to tell Bro, essentially, that I'm defining a protocol analyzer. And this protocol analyzer needs a name, I call it TFDP, and it's running over UDP. So that means Bro knows where to kind of hook it in internally. Um, I need to tell it how to parse it. And I'm par parsing it with this message record we just defined. So if I go back to this file, basically I'm referencing the namespace here, and I'm going to this, 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 this message here, right? So I parse it with that, and um, I need to tell Bro actually which, which port to parse. So that it, I mean, it's the simplest way to, to activate a protocol analyzer is just looking for the well-known port. So I'm going to tell it, okay, this is running on port UDP. Um, next, my events. So what I want to do is I want to raise this, this request re event here whenever this field gets parsed, right? So because that is a request. And I just write that. It's basically on message RRQ, um, I want an event, and the event is called TFDP uh, RRQ, and I want to give it three parameters. The first parameter is the connection. There's kind of a magic word for that, so that it kind of gets the right information out of Bro's um, connection level analysis. So then more interesting, I can now reference with essentially binpack++ expressions the fields in this message record. So I want to pass the I want to pass the file name. How do I get to the file name if I am, if I actually have an instance of the message? I, I go to the RRQ field, and inside the RRQ field, I need to go down here to the F name field. So basically, I just write that RRQ and F name. And I do the same for um, the mode. Event number one. Um, let me just do the second. There was the data. One um, was kind of pretty much the same, except that we go down here to data, and then the field inside the data unit was also called data, I believe. Okay. Well, let's see. Okay, so now we actually we are switching to bro, right? Because and, and that means I'm now working from this trace. And I need to tell it 
where it finds its parser. I'm going, giving it actually this PFDP EVG file because that knows then to pass, to, to pull in the, the pack two file. And um, I'm giving it my bro script with the two event handles. And then I probably made some mistakes as usual. Um, say again? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> there you go. So it's, oh, actually, it's a bit, this is kind of hard to see because I still have my print statements in here. So it's actually executing this code as well because, well, it's defined there. So let that, let's take that out. Let's run again. It looks better, right? So this is, if you compare it to our event handlers, it's exactly the RRQ, and it's the data for each data packet with the data length. So now we um, defined both the, um, the, 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 the grammar for TFTP, and we defined the interface to Bro, and let me see, maybe that is, um, it took like 60 lines of code, including all the, the white space in there. So if you compare that to, if you had done the same in like, like old style C++, probably would have taken you a day to, to get that working. So this is the basic, basic principle of, of Binpack++. So you write it like in this, this single language um, where you define all your stuff for describing the protocol, including additional code you want to execute. You could keep even global state there. You can keep like, like maps of stuff to remember things across messages. Um, then you tell it, well, how to actually transfer this information to Bro, what events to raise. And then you just start Bro with that information, and it will, in the background, do all the, the, the heavy work and compile this just in time into an actual parser. Any questions so far? How do you handle uh, fields in protocols that are, uh, there's like a length field that specifies like the next section or like, uh, mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to show you that next. Okay, cool. I believe, <laughs> when if I understood your question right. So basically, let me see, what is my time? Um, I have a second example, but I'm not going to write that like from scratch, I'm just copying it over. Um, so, and, and um, I think one difference for BinPack++ I haven't explicitly said yet is that BinPack++ is, is agnostic to the type of data it parses. So, so far I've talked about network protocols because that's what we are currently parsing in Bro. Um, BinPack++ doesn't care what it's parsing. There's no problem parsing file formats, for example. So my next example is parsing a zip file. So what I'm going to do is I'm getting um, essentially the, the header information for all the files out of a zip file. So I have a, it's actually, happens to be this, this rcap.zip, which I just transferred via TFTP. If I look at that in there, um, you see this, this is the content, and I want to write a binpack++ plus plus grammar, which gets this information if I pipe in rcap.zip. And again, for, for time reasons, I don't actually write it, but I show you how it looks like. Actually, let me go into my editor. Um, so let me walk you through. The main parts, at least. So, so basically, a zip file is really just a list of files. So there's, there's, they're, they're just kind of sequentially uh, concatenated inside this archive. And then at the end of the zip archive comes a directory structure which kind of summarizes all the files which have been uh, encountered before in, the, in this directory. And this is how I express this in BIMPEC++. I can write, I will, I have a list of files, and then each file follows this structure down here. Right? And that is just as I had just shown for TFTP, you basically start listing the various fields. Um, actually, this, each file header starts with a magic, which is to have, I'm sure you guys know this, this, this PK something. So and it's the, the, the three and the four which indicate that this is actually you now a file coming versus some other stuff. And then I just list these fields. Um, most of them are just pretty much straightforward um, 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 two-byte fields. There is this, the time field is a bit special. It's actually also a 16-bit field, but I'm passing it a bit more in depth. I can talk about that later if, if I have the time for that. Um, but I believe the question which was just raised is, is down this year. So in, in zip, um, the 
file names are specified in, this, in, in the way that first there's the length of the file name coming, and after that, the file name itself. So and I can tell WinPack++ essentially, okay, read bytes um, of a given length, and I give the length by specifying an expression which can reference what has been passed at this point. So basically, as I say, okay, pass as many bytes as you find in this field. Does that answer the question? Can you check on that? I can do checks on that, yeah. So, so one thing I can always do is um, I can actually add code at any point here. So I can just, the simplest way, I could just print out the length here. Um, but I could do checks here as well. I could do an assertion there, for example, or I could raise a pass error if, if it doesn't match the right kind of thing. So that's, that's kind of, the, the, the key piece here is that I can add arbitrary logic at any point of time, and I have various, like, 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 like um, calls back into the binpack plus plus API, for example, to, to trigger a pass error if something is violated. Um, there's that, and then, um, well, this is, this is down here. So, so there's, there's one more interesting thing to see here, and that is, so I said, basically, the file headers start with this magic. Um, zip files distinguish between the various types of data they have with different magics, obviously, and the directory structure at the very end has a different magic. So if you look at what I've defined here, basically it says, okay, there's a list of files until there's a directory. And the way it can figure that out is actually by looking at what is the next magic coming up. And WinPack++ generates look-ahead parsers. It looks always like one symbol ahead. And it can automatically figure out that this list is terminated once it sees the directory magic. This is actually what, what, what like, like um, standard language parsers for programming languages do to distinguish um, otherwise ambiguous cases. So it's pretty powerful for certain situations, like, like this one, actually. Um, so and then I, what I can do is um, just as I did before, I would define my, I could define events, zip file. In this case, um, is the main event here, which gets um, basically this information here, which you see here on the right for each file. I print it out again, um, and I need to add this one at the moment because I need to actually activate this zip analyzer. Um, if I see it in some connection, or maybe I should say, so, so basically, I haven't said it, this is the interface to Bro, obviously, so what I wanna do is I wanna hook the zip parser now into Bro's file analysis framework, so that, for example, when you see a zip file being transferred over HTTP, <coughs> the HTTP parser can pass on this data into the zip file analyzer we just wrote, and then I want to get the zip file event here. So ignore this, this is basically, I, I think we were going to automate this later, but basically now I, I just unconditionally, I just have a single connection in my trace I'm going to use, I just unconditionally activate the, the zip analyzer for each file I see. So and then finally, the additional part is um, our EVT file, just like as for the connection before, except that now I'm actually defining a file analyzer for Bro. And so I just write, okay, this is a file analyzer, I name it um, zip, essentially pack to zip, um, I tell it how to parse it, that is now referencing into this, the, 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 the zip pack two file, this archive unit. And um, where earlier I gave it a protocol, uh, sorry, I gave it a port number so that it knows when to activate, now I'm giving it a MIME type. So that it knows whenever you see a MIME type, this MIME type application zip somewhere, feel free to activate my new parser. Um, and then I define this one event, okay, whenever you parse a zip file, please generate this zip file event. Parse the file in this case, um, plus these, these fields, um, which are all coming out of um, the, the, the grammar we just saw. All right, let's see if this works. So I do have um, a trace, so I just ha actually have a trace where this, this archive.zip file, the same zip file is transferred over HTTP, so I'm going to use that. Um, I need to give it the zip evt file, I need to give it the zip.bro file. a little bit, and there you get the code. So you see the file ID, not the code, the, the, the data. You see the file ID, and you actually see these values matching what you see here coming out of the unzip. Well, the timestamps you won't probably, if you're not very skilled at reading Unix timestamps, you don't see that immediately, but it's basically Bro's representation in, in epoch time. Um, but I guess you, you, you recognize the file names here. 
So we just hooked to in, a, a new zip file analyzer into Bro. Um, there is one more piece I wanted to show. So I now have a TFTP analyzer, I have a zip analyzer. Wouldn't it be cool if I could like analyze the zip file being transferred over FTP directly? And I can. So I can basically, inside my, my BIMPAC++ grammar, I can tell it, okay, I have file data here. Please send that to Bro into the file analysis framework. Um, let me do that. I hope this works. <laughs> um, let me, I go back to my, my TFTP grammar here. So and I, I, I actually just need to do two things. I, I need to say, um, whenever I have passed such a request here, down here, um, actually, let me go a bit higher. So whenever um, I've passed this request here, that is actually marking the beginning of a new file, right? So, so that is, a new file always starts with, with one of these requests. So I actually I need to import Bro functionality because now, now it's getting Bro specific here. Um, and I have a function which is called data begin. So basically I tell Bro, okay, new Bro file starting here. Um, then next interesting piece is the data itself. So I want to forward the data into Bro. So I call Bro, there's a file data in. Reference the data and close my hook. So again, this is code which is executed like along with this field. So at the moment this data field is passed, this code executes and it calls a predefined function raw data in. Um, I believe that's all that should be necessary. So let me see. So I go back to my, my bro. I go back actually to my TFTP trace now. So this is the TFTP trace transferring the zip file. Um, now I need to be careful. I need to give it the zip analyzer. I need to give it the TFTP analyzer, and I give it the two like before. And I actually need to, I, so as I haven't told you guys about the, um, no, actually, actually, I don't even need it, it's okay. Um, I, I was thinking about this this time unit, but I think it's pulled in automatically. Is that all? I believe that's all, let's see. Next a little bit. So again, it's, Kicking off the pipeline, it's compiling code in the background. This could actually be cached and then it would be faster. So there's no caching in place right now. Well, and um, you see the zip data, right? Means we have just connected the two because it's running bro, running on a TFTP trace, extracting the zip archive, passing the data for that into the zip analyzer, generating the TF, uh, sorry, the zip events, printing out the data. So, um, that shows how you can feed essentially the file analysis framework out of Bro here. Um, that pretty much concludes my demo. I, one thing I, 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 I'm not showing, um, but you could actually do this, this hooking together of these two. You could do that inside BinPack plus, bin plus Plus as well. So you can actually inside, if you, if you leave Bro aside, you can connect, um, uh, you could connect this TFTP analyzer with the zip analyzer inside the impact plus as well. So you can just say, okay, I have data here, please pass it with a different analyzer. And it would all happen inside there. But did you oh. write the code manually in this case that you have to import the zip file analyzer? So inside mm -hmm. the TFTP, you have to specify the specific unit? Mm -hmm. Or is there some generic extraction for files also in BIMPAC? Um, that works via MIME types. So basically, in BIMPAC plus plus, you can say, okay, please connect an analyzer for MIME type something. And you need to get this MIME type from something. In TFTP, that's actually difficult because TFTP doesn't tell you the MIME type. So you would need something like libmagic or some other heuristic to detect the MIME type. But say you have a uh, BINPAC++ analyzer for, for HTTP where the MIME type comes with, um, you could just take that directly and then say, okay, now connect the unit which is responsible for, for this particular MIME type. Does, um, before your protocol analyze, or before these ran, um, is this automatically handle uh, file types that are multiple packets and packet reordering and things like that? Good question. It's not automatically handling, handling it, and I'm simplifying my TFTP example a bit. So if the packets were reordered, it would have a problem. Um, we are about to add actually reassembly um, functionality to BinPack++, so basically that you, that, that you could kind of, as, as you pass the protocol, you can um, put it back in order and only then forward to the next chain. So that's a step still missing, but it's, it's uh, on the near-term roadmap. What version of Bro do you foresee this uh, being built into? <laughs> so what you're seeing, the Bro on the right-hand side is, is current master. 
However, <laughs> um, it's using the new plugin mechanism. So this whole, basically it's, it's an unmodified Bromaster on the right hand side, but it loads an, a binpack plus plus plugin. And that is where all the magic happens. So, so basically currently it separately pulls in this functionality and binpack plus plus itself, and actually there's a different system beneath it, Hilti, where this is all built on top of. Um, they are currently in prototype stage, I would say. So it, it's working. It's actually um, also in terms of performance, it, it's kind of approaching the original analyzers, but it's not production ready in the case that, that it's totally stable and robust in all cases, that it's well tested, that, that the error messages are right, that kind of stuff. Um, so it's getting there. So what you're saying is it's on GitHub? Um, actually, it's, it's already public, though not linked anywhere, but it will be actually go onto bro.org, git, git bro.org soon. So we have, um, maybe I can just go back to my slides real quick um, to wrap this up, and then I can show you oh, one more thing here. So basically, this, as I just kind of said, this is all built actually on a, on a, on a different system, and the different system is Hilti. So and this is the... Actually, I can use my, my mouse here. So there's a whole pipeline involved to make this happen. So it's, the, the goal was to make it easy from the user end, doesn't mean it's easy on the back end side. So basically, in this pipeline, this, these two steps here is been packed plus plus. That means you, you, you have the, these grammars and the grammars are compiled into something else. And the something else is an intermediary representation. Think of it, Hilti is, is, think of it as a Java VM for network traffic inspection. So it's a, it's a virtual machine environment um, which has the right kind of primitives and, and data flow um, idioms for analyzing network traffic at high speed. So in, in Hilti is essentially this, this thing here which you compile these parsers or these grammars into Hilti parsers and from there we compile it down to LLVM because we don't want to do like the native code generation ourselves. And then LLVM um, links some other stuff in and does all the just-in-time magic, and then you get the native executable code. So it's really two systems. It's, it's, it's Hilti, basically, this part here, and it's binpack plus plus there. Um, it's all currently in, in, in one repository, and this repository for both of that will be public soon. We, are, we are actually have just a research paper accepted on the Hilti part of that. Um, and it will be published in November, I believe, and um, Quite a bit before that, I anticipate making this, this available on gitbro.org. Um, so there's, I'm, I'm skipping the features here, but basically um, I wanted to add, there, there's, there's, there's one thing, and that's kind of Seth's vision, I think, or at least what he has been pushing for. So in some sense, um, with Binpack++, we are adding another scripting language to Bro. Um, it's not this event-based, write me a detector or do some logging kind of stuff. It's um, write me a parser, or I, I'm writing a parser. But in some sense, it's something which is not exposed to the user. This, this parsing of protocols and of files is not exposed to the user, um, meaning in some sense, this is now becoming part of the user interface as well, and it's pretty easy for anybody to um, maybe modify an existing parser, do some additional stuff in addition, or even write a new one from, from scratch. Um, and, and, and that is what I believe makes it really powerful, um, because it, it kind of lowers the barrier extremely. And this applies not only to Bro, as I've said a few times, but actually this Binpack++ and Hilti both are totally independent of Bro. Um, basically, this EVT files, that is the link to Bro, and that's where the Bro plugin comes in, but everything else is independent. Um, one thing I want to do is write a Wireshark interface for Binpack++. So you give Wireshark a Binpack++ grammar, and suddenly it shows up. So basically, a, a way to write this sectors this way without um, having to write the C code they currently require. Um, so there should be actually pretty straightforward. Most of that is in place. I just need to learn the Wireshark API for that. Um, that was my talk. <laughs>